Hi. How are you? I hope I'm doing better than I was yesterday because oh. I sucked yesterday. Do you have a hard day yesterday? Yeah. Did you notice I kind of ducked out? Yeah. Early? I just figured, oh, she probably has to get dinner going or something. No, that was early. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I kind of, I didn't look over it until probably, well, it was the read back part I noticed. Oh. So I just thought, oh, she must have just left. No, yeah. just one of those days. I went and cried with you my did. son. Yeah. Aww, he's, going, he's going, talk to Jill, talk to Jill. Aww. See, I'm going, I have no motivation. I'm never going to get it. And I'm too old and we're done every time. Yeah. So. Oh, yeah. But just remember, everybody has bad days. You know, know. they do. Yeah. I just talked to a student that's in qualifying and uh, at another school and that used to go to Sage and she also uses our, you know, she goes to, you know, uses platinum steno and she was having a really bad day. I, everybody has them, you know, but I told her, like I, I would tell you, you know, even if you're on your machine, you're still getting a workout, you know? Yeah. So when you have my, that really my hands were hurting yesterday, really? too, like my wrists. And just now I can't really show you. The next time you come over, I want you to to look at like the height of my machine. I know that I shouldn't be bending my hands up this right. way at all, right? It should almost be lower. Yes. I, yes. Okay. Well, my my arms are at a downward angle, but then I, I don't know. I don't know. Yeah. Um, well, at least they're not up. I mean, some people yeah. quite like that, but uh, that's that's not you know that that can create a lot of problems with your wrists. Yeah. Where were your hands hurting? Was it your wrist or your fingers? Yeah, or? right around my wrists yesterday. But I'm old, and I'm thinking, oh, it's probably arthritis or something, you know. But I anyway, I guess I'm not that old, but no, I feel old. No. So. I know my, my one, one of my best friends, that's a court reporter. Um, she's the, she's the one that, uh, Nora is sitting out with. Mm -hmm. We had to mm -hmm. have, um, carpal tunnel surgery right after we finished <sighs> school. I mean, she hasn't had problems since then, but, yeah. um, cause her wrist hurts. So, you know, and that's, but then, uh, somebody had told her that if you wear like these little, there's some kind of braces they can give you, then that mm -hmm. would put off the surgery. But at that time she didn't know, you know, right. She the only option. So I don't know. And, or maybe just if you're having a bad day and that hurts, maybe sometimes my, my, um, hands, you know, it's funny, my, you know, my little light box here uh -huh. push for the, That's so cute. I know. Isn't that cute? But mm -hmm. sometimes when I'm, I'm pressing on those buttons, my wrist just aches more than really. I, yes. It's really hmm. weird. Like sometimes it starts shaking cause it's, I don't know, it's weird, but then it doesn't do that on my machine. So I don't That's know. Maybe, bizarre. But um, maybe just uh, try taking some Advil too. Or, yeah. Um, you know? Yeah. I know I have to do that a lot right before I go to practice because I feel like, ooh, I'm getting old. My back starts hurting and, mm -hmm. you know. <laughs> yeah, you just start feeling yeah. all the little, like, ooh. You do. Yeah. Yeah. You do. So, yeah, well, just just remember, we all have our bad days. It's like anything. It's like a sport, you know, you're going to have your bad day. But yeah. Out there, you know what I mean? Yeah. But if you're out there, practicing, yeah. you're still, you're still getting the muscle memory in. I know. And I did that yesterday. I did a bunch of theory pages and then, um, and then earlier, uh, I did some more theory. Good. So. Good. Oh, and, you know, there's so many things that play, that play a role into that. Like if you don't get enough sleep or if you're hungry mm. or there's just so many, you have, you know, uh, things in your personal life that you're thinking about just so mm -hmm. many things can offset whatever it is you're trying to do. I, I think that that was a lot of it too, maybe because, you know, now we're finally planning on eventually retiring and, you know, we're, we're getting excited about that and planning a trip to Idaho in July, hopefully. And, and, uh, and now maybe even rather than, cause you know, we've looked on realtor.com at houses and I just don't see any that I like. And 
finally it dawned on me the other day. I said to Rick, you know, it may not be as expensive as we think to just buy some land and buy some house plans or, or have a house built. It'd probably be cheaper that way. And then that way we can get what we want. So, so yesterday I was looking at, you know, you can go online and, and look at house plans and just, you know, we're in the very early stages, but um, you know, thinking about that and having an end game, but, but the, and so I think that that kind of, um, causes mixed feelings in me too, because I want to continue working, but I don't want to live really, I don't want to live in a big city at all. But now we're looking at like Garden Valley, Idaho, mm. which is about an hour away from Boise. And, you know, I'm sure that there's, you know, and then I'm thinking, do I want to stay with this? You know, or are we going to need the income for me to do? So I'm kind of, yeah, I'm everywhere. Yeah. You're just trying to figure out you're like, yeah, a planner. yeah that's how I am too. I want to know I have a plan. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So anyway. Uh, well, and just remember too, if you do decide to move out in the middle, like if you're out in the middle of nowhere, I mean, you can, you can do a lot of things online, you know? Yeah. Um, I can what, like be a scopist or, oh, or no, like whatever. If you're a reporter. No. Yeah, we can do a lot of things online. Like when my sister-in-law got diagnosed with um, breast cancer at first, she was working for the court, but then, um, you know, the word got out there that she was going to have, she, she couldn't go, you know, she had her chemo. And so there was somebody in LA that offered for her to do closed captioning with, um, it wasn't live though. It was like movies and, oh, nice. Yeah. And it was like, she watched the movie and the, because then what they were doing is they're, they want, they want that captioning for, for, uh, for everything out there. So she was taking older movies and watching them and writing to them. Oh, uh-huh. So that, but then she got so sick, she couldn't even do that. But my point yeah. is she, if she hadn't have gotten so sick, she could have kept doing what she was doing. Sure. And she was making great money. So there's so many things you can do at home that you okay. can do. I mean, there, we have so That's students. good to know. Oh, yeah. That's really good to know. Yeah. There's so, so many students that live um, out in the country. And they, you know, that's the great thing about all this online. But, you know, I can see where your point is, too. Like, if your husband's going to be retiring and if you don't need the money, then, you know, then, you know what I mean? I can see where, where you're thinking about all of this. Yeah. I, I don't know. I don't know. You're going to have to go, you're going to have to go online and, and Google this place. It's just, it's literally surrounded by mountains and it's, and I mean, there's a town and everything, but, um, oh God, it's just, it's you know, I beautiful. should just come over and you could show it to me online Yeah, and then we yeah. can talk about, we can just talk about this stuff, you know, what are you doing after class pros and cons teaching theory? Oh, um, right. I know Paisley last night, she was, um, poor baby. She was crying. Her eye got, um, kind of swollen and, uh, oh. I don't know if she was starting to get, I hope she's not getting a cold. Oh, they I know. Since she's been home, but, um, she, well, this, she took her out to the pediatrician that's too. What I, told her. So, she, I, have any, yeah. I said, I know. And you had to take her to the pediatrician and there, there's probably what choice do you have though? You know, I mean, a newborn baby, you got to take her in and get checked out and, I know. I wish they almost oh. have a separate little room for the healthy kids that have to go in there. You know what I mean? Yeah. And not some do. Uh, Herwitz and Marietta does. She has a sick room and a wow. a well room, but you know Smart. she's just so slammed. Mm. So, well, um, poor Paisley. I know. So I told you know her that I would I would cuddle with her so she could she didn't get any sleep last night. So I said oh. I'll watch her why you know you get some sleep, but. I know, and she's such a good baby. So Gosh, anyway, it's so hard. Oh. I know, but um, but how about um, how about one day next week? Would that work? Could we okay. put that next week? Okay. Yeah. Well, you know, like I said, I have no life, so um, <laughs> shouldn't say that, but I don't. And so, let me know what day works for you. Look at your calendar and and let me know. Okay. And we um, can do that. We could put some, how about, uh, um, how about Monday? 
after class. What is that, the fifth? Okay. I think it is. Yeah, you wanna do that? Yeah. Okay. Okay, so I'll just come over after class then. Okay, yeah. sounds good. Okay. Yay, something to look forward to. I know. I okay, know. let's okay. go. All right. I'm so gonna do better ready. today. All right, yes, yep. And try to have just those positive thoughts. Okay. Okay, yeah. All right, I'll, I'll mute you and we'll start. Here we go. Shut me up. No, I was going to keep going and I'm like, okay, I need to shut up. Yeah. Yeah, Bilbo's probably going to start screeching oh, soon. So. He's been quiet. Oh, well, yeah. He's hanging out on the side of his cage there. So. Oh, okay. He's, he's, he'll start saying, don't bite, don't bite <laughs> now. And he'll say, stop it. Stop. Oh, so funny. He's so anyway. cute. Okay. All right, here we go. All right, so these are words that have the ow and ah. Okay, they're just word practice though. Here we go. House, cot, mouse, crawl, louse, prawn, pounce, drawn, cloud, fawn, loud, dawn, doubt, brawl, clout, Fraught, spout, scrawl, trout, drawl, crowd, claw, plow, raw, stout, pawn, sound, jaw, mound, straw, round, sprawl, couch, Shawl, pouch, lawn. Okay, now these are going to be car accident briefs. So if there's something you don't know, just um, raise your hand, okay? And I'll give it to you. Here we go. Driveway, highway, roadway, scene of the accident, skid mark, ambulance, passenger, Window, vehicle, motorcycle, before the accident, after the accident, intersection, parking lot, rear view mirror, side view mirror, SUV, freeway, accident, windshield, traffic, speed limit, stop sign, stop light, street light, red light, green light, yellow light, brake light, flashing light, traffic light, seat belt, impact, collision, now I don't use these, but they're on here. Point of impact, hoit. I can never remember these, so I never used them. After the impact, A-E-K-T. Before the impact, B-E-K-T. So it makes sense, because impact is M-A-K-T. So it's all the final K-T for impact, you know? I don't know, I just could never remember them. So, um, but yeah, you, so you just pick and choose what you want, you know? All right, now here are just some regular, um, they're in alphabetical order. So I'm gonna give you some uh, briefs. And again, if you wanna know one, just let me know. Accident, account, actually, admissibility, admissible, aggravated robbery. Again, I write that out, but it's G-R-O-B, grob agreement, alcohol, allegation, allege, applicable, argument, assault and battery, at that time, this is your, this is, does this come in, yeah, look, I've got my little 
I gave this to the high speeds and they loved it. At that time, at this time, attorney, background, beyond a reasonable doubt, bias or prejudice, BOIP, burden, call your attention. Again, I write that out, but there is a brief for it. Uh, chosen, circumstance, circumstantial, circumstantial evidence. Okay, so we'll stop there. And we did about half the page. I don't want to overwhelm anyone. Now, I'm going to give you the brief and then I'm going to give you the sentences with this one, okay? Okay, this is from the 6080 brief packet, okay? So we've got approximate, approximately, approximation, um, at any time, at all times, at the present time, T-E-P-T, -E at that time, at that, at that point, T-A-P-T, -E at the same time, at the time, What's at the same time again? That's taint. T long A M T. Oh, taint. T T A I M T or N as in Nancy. M as in Mary. Taint. Okay, gotcha. Yeah, taint the same for the M and same. gotcha. Yeah, taint. And then we have at the at the time at this at this time at what time. At which time? Bathroom, bedroom, children, conversation, driveway, freeway, highway, roadway, red light, green light, yellow light, stop light, street light, Flash or flashing light, brake light, um, traffic light, cooperate, cooperation, defend, defense, dining room, do you know, do you recall, do you remember? For example, had been, have been, has been, do you have identification? Is that correct? Is that right? Little living room, judgment, bedroom, bathroom. That is correct, that is right. All right, so now here are the sentences. Can you approximate that? It is approximately two miles. He gave us an approximation. Be seated at all times. Come in at any time. Where was he at that point? Was she present at that time? They were at that location. Can you talk and read at the same time? At the time, she was on the phone. At the present time, I'm unable to attend. I believe they were at this diner. At this time, I think he was there. At what time did he arrive? Do you know at which time he came? The bathroom is on the left. Her bedroom is at the end of the hall. 
can you check on the children? We had a brief conversation. The driveway was wet. Our freeway is always crowded. The highway is a beautiful route. The roadway had several curves. Don't run the red light. The yellow light caught me off guard. I proceeded through the green light. The stoplight wasn't working. Why didn't you stop for the street light? My bedroom and bathroom are a mess. That is correct. I was involved. That is right. He was there. The flashing light caused the accident. The car's brake light was out. The workers were repairing the traffic light. Can you make a judgment on the case? It is a cute little house. The living room is quite large. They did the job, is that right? He was there, is that correct? Do you have any identification? He has been there before. We have been scheduled for three o'clock. They had been waiting for three hours. For example, he walked this way. Do you know if they are going? Do you recall the time? Do you remember the date? Let's eat in the dining room. I will defend that argument. They had a weak defense. Did they cooperate with you? They gave us their full cooperation. How was that? I hate cooperation and cooperate. Anything yeah. that that has the RP and you know what I really hate is <laughs> at all times. Pulse. I'm either going to have to because it's LTS and and that's like often I don't like that one either because I'm having to the F uh, yeah it yeah. works. O, O, F, N. That's often. Okay, and it's so just, I write often. Oh, oh, you do what? I just write it out. But oh, I two see. strokes. Yeah. It's just any any of those. I hate those. Yeah. Yeah, Talts. So you don't like doing the Talts? The LTS? No. No, because, okay, T, A, U, L. -T. It's just... It's difficult with my pinky and my forefinger to yeah to have it here to do that oh, yeah wow. yep my my forefinger wants to do LG together mm -hmm. as well so yeah that's hard for me. Well, you can always throw in the G, you know if you yeah that's that's true because what else Linda would Hagen it be? Big on that, Linda Hagen always says if you throw in another letter and. And it doesn't conflict. Right. She's big on that. She's like, then just add it to your dictionary because chances oh. are you're going to make that mistake and it's going to come up then. Good idea. Okay. Because, yeah, it doesn't look like it does interfere so, with anything. So then it, then you could do T-A-U. L-G-T-S. Yeah, at all times. Mm -hmm. And put it, ha have it both ways in there. So no matter what, right. it up. <clears throat> so, yeah, Linda okay. taught me that. She's like, what, what, why is that terrible? You know? Yeah, it's true. Um, and it's true. Is, yeah, I know she's she's big on that. So, all right. So now I'm going to give you some uh, vehicle descriptions. Um, we started this 
uh, but we didn't finish it. So I'm going to finish this. Okay. All right, here we go. 2009 Jeep Cherokee license number LT345 PY 1995 Ford Aerostar license number 5823 FNG 2017 Honda Civic Coupe license number GNB A 890 2008 Silver Hyundai Elantra License number F589PHG. 2005 Black Mazda MX3. License number 23DRF35. 1984 Tan Nissan Altima. License number 2RDS580. 2007 Silver Dodge. License number 4DS2545. 5. All right. I'm just stating this. Was license number LIN? Yes. Or is that, okay. okay. <clears throat> yes, L-I-N and then license plate is initial L final P. And then if they- I'm gonna write that down. Yeah, those are good. And then license plate number, you can either do um, L-N-L-T or you can flag it. Um, like flagging just signifies that it was said, like they said, license plate number, you know. Or not, maybe L-I-P and flag it. Yeah, yeah, LIP, license plate number. Yeah, that is a good one because license plate is LP. Mm -hmm. And then, the well, flag. I guess license, license number could just be LN. Oh, no, yeah, yeah. okay. LN, yep. Because um, it also says, it says LIN or LUM. License number. Oh, uh huh. From number. Hmm. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So uh, let me just. Um, red. Yeah, that's that's a good drill. All right. Now, we're gonna do some locations, largest cities in the world. Okay, here we go. Los Angeles, 5,849,378, United States. Alexandria, 4,247,414, Egypt. Baghdad. 6,258. Did I say 6,000? I'm sorry. I meant 6,258. Iraq. Bangkok. 8,704,000. Thailand. Santiago. 8,000. I'm sorry. I keep saying thousand. Eight million. 668,473, Chile. Yokohama, 3,602,758, Japan. Hong Kong, 7,206,000. Hong Kong, Beijing, 
690,297. China, New York City, 10,250,567. United States, Jakarta, 9,576,000. Seven hundred eighty Indonesia Tokyo eight million five hundred thirty five thousand seven hundred ninety two Japan Moscow eleven million four hundred fifty two thousand Russia all right. That was fun. Yeah, it's kind of interesting, huh? Oh, give me one second. I just need to show you something really quick. Okay. That I found yesterday. Hang on. Yes. Or go on if you need to. Just go ahead. Okay. I'll read just a couple of, um, I know I read this in the mid speeds, but I'm going to read this in the lower as well because it's such a good drill. Types of doctors. Okay. Here we go. Addiction, medicine, physician. Adolescent medicine physician, aerospace medicine physician, allergist, anesthesiologist, cardiac surgeon, cardiologist, cardiovascular disease physician, child neurologist, child psychiatrist, critical care physician, dermatologist. All right, so we'll stop there with that one. You got it. Is this what you read out of? Yep. Is it really? That's it. That it's just, it. I, and it, I might've put it away because we finished it, but yes. Yeah, same, Sarah, Sarah, same yep, one. That's, same one. <laughs> How funny. Isn't yeah. Place, I'm just fascinated with that place. It is. It's very cool. I just, yeah. I don't, I don't know where to put this. You know, I, I just have a two drawer file cabinet and we've got, you know, stuff for bills and everything, but stuff like this, you don't want to throw it away. You no, know, you don't. And it's funny so. everywhere I go, I see things like that. I'm like, Ooh, I can read that. You mm -hmm. know? Oh like, Yeah. Like, ooh, that's good information. I have to tell you that I have, I never did it before, but last night I found myself, I don't know what we were watching, but I found myself when I heard the words, I was doing the steno in my head. And, you know, not the whole time, but it would pop in and pop out and, yeah. Yes. yes. Yep, that, that's going to happen a lot. You know, because good, you know, maybe that's a good sign. No, it is. That's a very good sign. <laughs> good <laughs> sign that I'm going crazy. Yeah, and sometimes you just go, okay, I'm going to turn that off, you know. Uh huh. <laughs> so you've been to church and you're sitting there. My sometimes my husband will put my his hand on my my fingers because they're moving. <laughs> I'm listening. It's bad. It's so bad. I don't that's, know. That's that's so funny. Isn't that hilarious? <laughs> like, dear. <laughs> Listen. Yeah, yeah you, I know, because I don't even realize that they're moving. And I'm sure other people are probably thinking, man, that girl's fidgety, you know? That's funny. That's yes. so funny. So that, that's good that you're thinking about that. Well, at least you're not bringing your machine in there. Yeah. Can you imagine? No. I know I have thought about that at church sometimes. Like, yeah. hmm, should bring my you know, because yeah. he has a lot of pauses. and Oh, yeah. So, yeah. yeah. I, or think about, I have an article too. Um, I think I pulled it for the upper speeds, but it's all about a, a gal that she captions for um, her service, her church service. She pu published mm -hmm. it in the NCRA magazine. She does the songs and whatever is being spoken. And I just thought that was great. Instead of having like a sign, well, you could still have a sign, a, you know, a person that they're signing, but it just yeah the words come that out. is a really good idea though too because for something like that 
you that's something that you can volunteer your time you know it's like look i i can do this let me yeah yeah i'm big on that at church i just don't you know i don't feel right about taking not that i've ever been offered you know but just like volunteering you yeah. just don't want to you want to serve yeah oh yeah so definitely so, anyway. um, well we have just one more drill here okay called write what you hear drill because sometimes some of these don't really make sense but it's good no dr seuss yeah no it's not dr seuss though but it just doesn't make a whole lot of sense so here we go great <laughs> or she shouldn't but she did anyway anyhow he knew about the whole thing he asked her and she said no never so he went to another girl and asked if she wouldn't dare try it with them and the others, but she just doesn't do those things. What is it I'm trying to say here? What it might be is this. Is this what I'm trying to say? Me with my big mouth. My mouth mumbles much, too much. She does come between the two of them far too often. And that could be why she and he weren't there for very long. Perhaps it was because of the fact or facts that when they or whether they came face to face in a one-on-one -on -one confrontation, there would be a lot of you and I and mine and yours and his and hers and some yours or ours or could be, but then again, could be not. Could be, would want, will the, in it, did this, in some, would the, in this, does it, won't they, haven't we, had you, have we, she doesn't, at the, could be, there should, why we, should have, this isn't, when had, for it, from and for, the actual reason why we should have, did it this particular way, I almost always forget to practice from and for against each other and also and any and always and he and she and when and why and his and has and this, and that, and to, and on, and of, and the, answer as compared to just that, or was that about it? <laughs> that was interesting. Yes. But it was, but it was, it was good. Good, good. But then all of a sudden I drew a blank on and. And <laughs> yeah, what is okay? It's it, it's That's it's safe. when you're it's when you're looking at a a word like a bunch of times and it begins to not look like a word anymore, and you kind yes. of wonder how did they get that? <laughs> I've done that at work before with like mother on Mother's Day or something because so many cards, you know, say <clears throat> so. Yeah, that was it, and my yeah. Yeah, I've always wondered why they came up with and because I don't think that that's an easy stroke and it comes. It up isn't. Time. No, no. It isn't. I still kind of. I don't, you know, hit them all at once. I just kind of, mm -hmm. you know, type thing, and it it doesn't come out. I well, actually every time. know a reporter, and she writes and a n d because she's yeah. Like, 
I don't like the. SP. I don't see why not. I'm I so used to it now, though, I know. doing it the other way. So I don't know. Maybe I should make myself used to. Yeah. All right. So we'll go ahead and do some uh, literary. And I did find this article because I pulled it for high speed so I can read it to you guys, too, because, you know, you don't have to worry about that overlapping. So this is called um, Something for Everyone, How Shall They Hear? Here we go. Have you ever thought of honoring the people you provide cart or captioning for? on a Sunday morning and letting them know how special they are to your church. And while you are doing so, why not give the congregation a hint of what it would be like to have a hearing loss on a very special Sunday morning on October 14, 2017, in the two morning services, our church honored the people we captioned for and in so doing brought to the attention of the congregation how difficult it truly is for people with a hearing loss the church service that morning started out pretty much in the usual way then after the worship songs our pastor began explaining to everyone how this particular Sunday morning we were going to transition from our well-known hearing world into a world that most of us did not know very much about. A video began playing as we heard Pastor Dan say, catch this video. What is it like to be in a deaf or hard of hearing world? Let me back up a bit. In the weeks leading up to this church service, Martin Gardner, our technical person, with the help of John Ford, one of the people we captioned for, put together a video clip that was short and to the point, and what an effect it had. When we first thought about how to make the clip, we decided to use a song. As we wondered about which song, we thought back to the previous Easter play our church had put on, Eyes of Faith. Father Mark Curtis, also known as Canada's singing priest, had sung a song, You Thought of Us. As we thought about us, we realized this song would be perfect. So we got Father Mark's permission and blessing and by editing parts of the song we were able to convey 
a very meaningful message in two minutes. Once we chose the song, we then needed to figure out the audio. So we consulted with John Courtright, who has a profound hearing loss and is considered deaf, and his wife Kathy, who has a medium hearing loss and is considered hard of hearing. We asked for their advice because we really had no clue as to how the clip should sound. For years, John and Kathy have wanted to put together a video that showed hearing loss. They very patiently explained that the goal of the video was so that the audience can hear the sound, but not understand many or any of the words. They told us that it is usually very difficult to enable people to understand what a person with hearing loss actually hears. When making the video, you don't ever want complete silence because that is not really what deafness is like, says John. He says that so many people think that by simply turning up the volume, a person with a hearing loss will hear what is being said. Sometimes, yes, but most of the time, turning up the volume does not help. Kathy told us that deafness is similar to hearing a little something. Perhaps you can identify whether the speaker is male or female, but you just can't, for the life of you, figure out what is being said. John said that he envisioned the hearing loss simulation starting at normal audio and then having modified sound. He said we should remove enough of the consonants to make speech confusing and after another few moments, the captions could come on so everyone could see the words. So Martin started work on the video. He explains. So we'll stop there because there's more. There's quite a bit more, but I will finish this either in next week's low speed class or I could finish it tonight in the <coughs> speeds. Pretty, it's pretty interesting though how their little simulation and what they did. It just goes to show how important it is that everyone, you know, that they they can do this type of thing for people that have hearing loss, you know. All right. And so thank then, goodness. I know. I know it, it's really neat. Okay, so we're going to do a little bit of jury charge, and the subject is punitive damages. Okay. All right, here we go. <clears throat> Ladies and gentlemen of the jury, if you find that the plaintiff was unlawfully evicted and obliged to leave the premises without notice by reasons of the wrongful acts of the defendant, then you may consider whether or not 
all the circumstances, the plaintiff is entitled to recover what are known as punitive damages. Such damages are by way of punishment, that is, to punish the wrongdoer for his wrongful and unlawful acts and deter him from committing like offenses in the future. You may take all the facts and circumstances into consideration and then award such an amount for punitive damages as you feel would be fair and just under the circumstances. Punitive damages are allowed only when one does an act wrongfully and maliciously in the contemplation of the law where one interferes with the rights of another knowingly and purposely if at the same time he knows it is wrong and unlawful then it is malicious punitive damages should not be excessive and should be reasonable. They should be fitted to all the facts and circumstances in the case. It rests entirely with you whether or not you should award any such damages. If you do, they should be fair and reasonable. The jury are the sole judges of the facts in the case. The credibility of the witnesses and the weight to be given to their testimony in anything that the court may have said throughout the trial or anything that the court may say in the instructions, the court has not intended and does not now intend to express any opinion upon the facts of the case upon the credibility of the witnesses or the weight to be given to their testimony. Furthermore, the court instructs the jury that you have a right to consider all the evidence in the light of your own observation and experience in the affairs of life. All right, move into Q&A. All right, so we're gonna start out with plaintiff and I'll start at 60 and then work my way to 100, okay? All right. There we go. Good morning, deputy. You write deputy is D-U-P-T? Good. Good morning. What is your occupation? I'm a detective with the Oxnard Sheriff's Department. How long have you been a sworn peace officer in the state of California? A little over nine years now. What is your current assignment? 
I'm a detective with the narcotics division assigned to the region to street enforcement team. Could you briefly describe your background, training, and experience relating to narcotics investigations? And in your case, I'd like you to speak of possession for sales of methamphetamine and also just basic marijuana. Well, the training in the basic academy, which covered possession, sales of narcotics, and also the cultivation of it, just working patrol in the jail setting, I'd say involvement in three to 400 different cases with subjects either under the influence and possession for sales or cultivation of methamphetamine or marijuana. The possession of sales of methamphetamine, I would estimate I've had experience with 40 to 50 cases regarding that. Okay, now with marijuana itself, how many times have you come in contact with that? Several hundred. Does it have a distinctive smell? Yes. Texture? Yes, it does. Thank you. Now the search warrant that was previously testified to on September 11th on Charter Road, were you in charge? of that <clears throat> particular case? Yes, I was in charge of that case. I was the case agent. So when you arrived, how many deputies were there? I can't say exactly, but I would say seven, or eight of us. Now, immediately upon arrival, did you contact anybody? Yes, I did. How many subjects? Two. Where did you contact them? In what would probably be best referred to as the front yard of the residence. Now, was that male or female? Yes, male and a female. So one male, one female? Correct. Do you see the male in the courtroom today? Yes, I do. <clears throat> Could you please point out where he's seated and describe what he's wearing? The gentleman seated behind defense counsel wearing orange. May the record reflect the witness has identified defendant Myers. The record will so reflect. <clears throat> now you said there was a female also out front? Yes. Do you see her in the courtroom today? Yes, I do. 
Could you please point out where she's seated and describe what she's wearing? She's seated to my left of the male behind defense counsel wearing orange. Let the record reflect the witness identified defendant Patterson. Yes, the record will so reflect. Did you detain them outside? Yes. Did you observe or find anything in the general area where they were that was unusual? Yeah, near the female subject, we located a methamphetamine pipe that she had dropped as we were arriving. And we will get into her statement in a little bit. As they were secured, did you then make entry into the house? Yes. Did you contact anybody else inside the house? Yes, we did. How many people? One. Male or female? It was a male. And do you know how old that person was? He was the male defendant's son, 14 or 15. I don't recall exactly. He was a juvenile? Yes. And was that person's name Mason Meyer or Myers? Yes. Okay. Did he tell you who his father was? Yes. Who was that? The male defendant here, Mr. Myers. Did he say who lived there? Yeah, he told me he and his father. Okay, anybody else that he mentioned? I don't recall specifically, but he lived at that house? Correct. I'm going to assume you weren't the only person searching the residence. Correct. But anything that was found, would somebody come and point out what they found? Yes. Okay, now with your search, what area did you search? Well, I don't recall if I searched a particular area. Usually a case agent will assign the people to different areas. And I'm kind of the case agent overseeing things. I may have assisted out here, but I don't recall me personally searching a specific area. Now earlier, Deputy Ramos testified to the bag of somewhat moist, damp methamphetamine. Yes. What room was that found in? The front room of the residence where we made entry. Were you present when that was found or pointed out to you later? I think I was nearby, but it was pointed out to me. By Deputy Ramos? Yes. In that particular room, what else was found? There were a few marijuana plants that were growing in the closet adjacent to the wall where that particular methamphetamine was located was a cabinet. Inside that cabinet was another baggie which contained methamphetamine along with several chemicals 
including acetone. Did you find any other drugs itself? <clears throat> yes. On the wall where the methamphetamine and the coffee filter were located, we located two separate baggies of marijuana. Did you find any paperwork pertaining to any subjects? Yes, we found some paperwork in that room <clears throat> with Tom Meyer's name on it. Find any scales? We found one digital scale in that room. How about a money counter? Yes, we found a digital money counter. Any walkie talkies or scanners? Yes, it looks like we found one police scanner in there. In the same room? Yes. Now based on the items that were consistent with a methamphetamine lab, was anybody called out? Yes, they were. Who was that? Detective Hogan. And then did the crime lab also come out? Yes. All right, so we got to uh, <clears throat> 100. Now let's do <clears throat> some read back. <clears throat> Um, let's see here. I'm going to give you a word list, okay, just so you can kind of know what's coming up. So you're going to hear whether or not, Mrs. Millbrook, do you recall, courtroom. What's courtroom again? That's K-R-A-O-M, Kroom. Okay. I always yeah. get that in court reporter mixed <laughs> up. Some of those A-O's and A-E's, those confuse me. Yeah. Think of courtroom, you can hear the ooh. Oh, that's true. That's true. I, as soon as you said that, I thought that, okay, that's, that's easy to remember then. Yeah. Okay, and then you're going to hear Mr. Phillips, indi excuse me, indicated, which you can write indicate as Kate. Mm -hmm. um, seriously injured, to my knowledge, which is T-O-I-J. Uh, Brent Knox. Oh, hey, here's Boise City Jail. <laughs> hey, go. go it's a sign. Yeah, talk about a sign. Yeah, conversation. Do you recall? Um, let's see here. You're gonna hear argumentative because the plaintiff will come in. Custody, K-U-D. And let's see. Oh, interrogated. Now, interrogatory is trog. So interrogated, you can write it as T-R-O-G-T. -T. You just add the T for interrogated. Oh, I just did two strokes. I put interrogated. Okay. That's yeah, what sure. I did. So. Yeah. And then uh, <clears throat> officially. All right, so I'm going to stop right there. I don't want to give you too much. Okay, so this is going to be defense questioning, but the plaintiff in the court does come in, okay? Okay, what are you starting at? I'll start at 100. Okay. okay. And then I'll do 80 and then 60. And I'm sorry, we're starting with defense? Oh, defense, yes. Okay. And the first time we'll be at 100 and then 80 and then 60, okay? All right, here we go. Mrs. Millbrook, do you recall anything from the recording that was played in this courtroom when you asked several times whether or not your husband was dead or injured? Yes, ma'am, I do. And in response to one of 
Mr. Phillips questions, you indicated that that was the first time that you found out that your husband was seriously injured. Is that right? Yes, ma'am, it is to my knowledge. Do you recall having a conversation with a Brent Knox in the Boise City Jail? Vaguely, yes, ma'am. Do you recall the date of that conversation? Well, I think it was sometime in November. Do you recall the substance of that conversation with Mr. Knox? Most of it, yes. Do you recall saying, well, they tried to kill Tony. They told me they wouldn't hurt him. Vaguely, yes. I guess I said something along those lines. So you were aware that Tony was seriously injured when you left the house? No. Why did you make that statement to Mr. Knox? Your Honor, I will object to that question as argumentative. Overruled. Your Honor, I will rephrase it. Mrs. Milbrook, on that date, after you were taken into custody in the city jail, you told Brent Knox that you knew that your husband was either dead or seriously injured. Do you recall making that statement? Yes, ma'am, kind of. You have testified in court today that you did not know whether your husband was dead or seriously injured until later that day when you were interrogated by Deputy Perez. That's when I officially knew his status. That's when you officially knew what, Mrs. Milbrook? That my husband was still alive. All right, so let's do that again at 80. Okay. All right, here we go. Mrs. Milbrook, do you recall anything from the recording that was played in this courtroom when you asked several times whether or not your husband was dead or injured? Yes, ma'am, I do. And in response to one of Mr. Phillips' questions, you indicated that that was the first time that you found out that your husband was seriously injured. Is that right? Yes, ma'am, it is, to my knowledge. Do you recall having a conversation with a Brent Knox in the Boise City Jail? Vaguely, yes, ma'am. Do you recall the date of that conversation? Well, I think it was sometime in November. Do you recall the substance of that conversation with Mr. Knox? Most of it, yes. Do you recall saying, well, they tried to kill Tony. They told me they wouldn't hurt him. Vaguely, yes. I guess I said something along those lines. So you were aware that Tony was seriously injured when you left the house? 
No. Why did you make that statement to Mr. Knox? Your Honor, I will object to that question as argumentative. Overruled. Your Honor, I will rephrase it. Mrs. Millbrook, on that date, after you were taken into custody in the city jail, you told Brent Knox that you knew that your husband was either dead or seriously injured. Do you recall making that statement? Yes, ma'am, kind of. You have testified in court today that you did not know whether your husband was dead or seriously injured until later that day when you were interrogated by Deputy Perez. That's when I officially knew his status. That's when you officially knew what? Mrs. Millbrook, that my husband was still alive. All right. I suck. No, you don't. <laughs> no, you don't. Poor Jill. She just wants positive students. <laughs> no, I get it. I get it. We all have our, what are they called? Slumps. It's called a slump. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> court reporting is so much like a sport it's crazy it's like any I don't know if you did sports but we all yeah sports you get into a slump and it's so hard because you you try so hard and it's like okay I know I can do better than this you know yeah you hear people say that all the time I'm in a slump and that's it's like court reporting too it's crazy how it's so similar to a sport training for a sport you know all right, um, let's see here. Now, last time at 60, okay. Mrs. Millbrook, do you recall anything from the recording that was played in this courtroom when you asked several times whether or not your husband was dead or injured. Yes, ma'am, I do. And in response to one of Mr. Phillips' questions, you indicated that that was the first time that you found out that your husband was seriously injured. Is that right? Yes, ma'am, it is, to my knowledge. Do you recall having a conversation with a Brent Knox? in the Boise City Jail. Vaguely, yes, ma'am. Do you recall the date of that conversation? Well, I think it was sometime in November. Do you recall the substance of that conversation with Mr. Knox? Most of it, yes. Do you recall saying, well, they tried to kill Tony. They told me they wouldn't hurt him. Vaguely, yes, I guess. I said something along 
those lines. So you were aware that Tony was seriously injured when you left the house? No. Why did you make that statement to Mr. Knox? Your Honor, I will object to that question as argumentative. Overruled. Your Honor, I will rephrase it. Mrs. Millbrook, on that date, after you were taken into custody in the city jail, you told Brent Knox that you knew that your husband was either dead or seriously injured. Do you recall making that statement? Yes, ma'am, kind of. You have testified in court today that you did not know whether your husband was dead or seriously injured until later that day when you were interrogated by Deputy Perez. That's when I officially knew his status. That's when you officially knew what, Mrs. Millbrook? That my husband was still alive. All right. Now, do you want to each take a Q and an A? Sure. Okay. All right, so let's see here. You want to take the first question or do you want me to? I can do it. Let me just. Uh, okay. Okay. All right. Defense. Mrs. Millbrook. Do you recall? anything from the recording that was played in this courtroom when you asked several times whether or not your husband was dead or injured? Answer, yes ma'am, I do. Awesome, question. And in response to one of Mr. Phillips' questions, you indicated that that was the first time that you found out that your husband was seriously injured. Is that right? Answer, yes ma'am, it is, to my knowledge. Question, do you recall um, having a conversation with a Brent Knox on, could, should it be in the? Yes. Okay, the. I've got on the uh, Boise City Jail. Answer, vaguely, yes ma'am. Awesome, question, do you recall the date of that conversation? Answer, well, I think it was sometime in November. Question, do you recall the substance of that conversation with Mr. Knox? Answer, most of it, uh, most of it, yes. Perfect. 
Question, do you recall saying, well, they tried to kill Tony. They told me they wouldn't hurt him. Uh, answer vaguely, yes. I guess I said something along those lines. Question, so you were aware that Tony was seriously injured when you left the house? Answer, no. Question, why did you make that statement to Mr. Knox? And then plaintiff comes in and says, Your Honor, I will object to that question as argumentative. And then the court comes in and says, Overruled. Overruled. Right. Um, okay, defense. Your Honor, I will rephrase it. Mrs. And then question, Mrs. Millbrook, that. Do you have all after, uh, Oh, on that date, after you were taken into custody in the city jail, you told Brent Knox that you knew that your husband was either dead or seriously injured. Uh, do you recall making that statement? Answer. Yes, ma'am, kind of. Perfect. Question, you have testified in court today that you did not know whether your husband was dead or seriously injured until later that day when you were interrogated by Deputy Perez. Answer, that's when I officially knew his status the court that's when you officially knew what uh knew what mrs millbrook mm -hmm. answer that my husband was still alive perfect you know and i wonder too like how um maybe you're you're just wanting to write to perfection too. Yeah, I'm a perfectionist. Yes. So you gotta I'm let just, that go. In your own speed, just let it go, you know? Just let it go, let it go. <laughs> let it go. Just tell yourself, I'm not writing real time. I'm just getting the words. Yeah. You can focus on that when you're in like your trail, like 60. But when you're in your speed, 100, 120, just get, get the sign changes in the words. Even if it's sloppy, it's okay. Yeah, you know? I, I was doing that after a while. And that, that do you recall, always trips me up. I know what it is, but it's, I don't know, the, my finger always wants to go on the B instead of the R or the B and the T or, yeah, it, yeah. that always, Maybe or I was. Spend some time doing that, recall, yeah. recollect, recall, recollect, you know? Yeah. Oh, I forgot about recollect. Yeah. I still have to put that in my dictionary. Recollect, so, uh, yep. Go back and forth, you know? Yep. So, are you going to be able to come to class this evening? I'm going to try. Okay, I should good. be able to. Good. Yeah, because okay. dinner's going to be in the crock pot today, okay. so. Okay. Okay. Yeah. All right. Well, then I will see. I'm glad you can come this evening. Yeah. Okay. I'll be there. I'll, I'll suck, but I'll be there. <laughs> no. Don't say oh. that. You have a positive. Okay, you're right. Positive. You're mind. right. I will. I yeah. will. Yeah. And I'm positive I'm going to win the lottery. Yes. Mm -hmm. Well. Yeah. Got to buy a ticket. Money on that. that. So no. All right. Well, I will see you this evening. All right. Okay. Have a great day. Okay. Sounds good. Okay. I'll talk to you later. You okay. too. Okay. Bye. Bye.